Hello, my name's Alex. A few days ago, I went to a music festival where I caught COVID-19 and I'm now self-isolating for 10 days. Every single day throughout these 10 days, I'm going to be recording a podcast with someone interesting or cool and I want to find out more about their passions, hobbies and life. Hopefully, this will stop me from going insane. We'll find out together. Welcome to the Rona Chats. Enjoy. You'll notice something about today's episode. We have two guests on. That's right, lucky you. So when you finish watching one, remember to check out the other because they're both pretty awesome. Episode seven, I'm, I'm still in this chair. I haven't left, I haven't left the house whatsoever. I've still got COVID, I'm still inside. You and I both know this, I'm here until the eighth. But to help me pass the time, I have the one and only Hannah Freeman. Hannah is a very dear friend of mine who I've known God, since we were in year seven. Um, oh my uh, goodness, yeah. I know. Uh, Hannah is, has just recently graduated uni, also a musician who tours with Emma McGrath, and just an all-round lovely person. Hannah, how are you finding the end of the world? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, where do I start? I mean, oh, it's so uncertain at the moment. I mean, like, obviously, I, I've just finished uni, and I'm kind of, I've just come into, like, a world of so many question marks and I literally don't know what to do with myself um but yeah like thankfully gigs are starting to happen again um like are we doing we're doing board masters uh later on this month and I'm super excited about it um so yeah I don't I don't really know what I'm doing with myself other than that to be honest just vibing yeah it happens vibing and thriving it happens yeah I mean um (laughs) Looking over the past year, how did, like, because as you said, like, no gigs whatsoever. What was that like to kind of, yeah, going from uh, like, gigging and touring a fair bit to just like, oh, this is this is life now. I'm on the sofa with a cup of tea and an endless supply of Netflix. What was that like for you? It was so sad because, like, it was going to be an epic year, right? Like, we had a couple, we had like a cool couple of dates in the diary and stuff, and then. Uh, obviously the old Rona happened and yeah I was literally sat on the sofa with a cup of tea for a good couple of months like a year um and I was really sad because obviously we missed out on festival season and festival season is always the best and now we're just like we're like getting back into it at the end of festival season Mm -hmm. so yeah at least I didn't at least I kind of didn't miss two years but yeah yeah, one year was pretty pants yeah of course yeah and I mean Looking like going back to the start, because I mean, um, uh, like, how did you get like involved with um, with I know like how how was it like? Oh yeah, I, I'd happily you know go into touring. I want to be a musician. I want to do musicy stuff. What was that? What was that? Your kind of journey of that? Um, it, to be honest, I've well, I've always loved doing music, and it kind of just kind of just happened. I mean. <laughs> Like I've always done music anyway. And then at one point, like my friend Emma got in touch with me and she was like, Oh, I need a I need a keys player for a couple gigs. And I was like, Yeah, that's wicked, I'll do that. And I thought it was gonna be like two festivals. And but then um what is it now? Four, four, five years later, <laughs> I'm still playing with her and she's she's wicked, she's awesome. Um but to be honest, it she's kind of the one that got she is the one that got me into like the live scene. And <laughs> I yeah I've just I've just played with her for for a couple of years and I really really enjoyed it because it's re- it's so much fun like being on stage and and all of that and so yeah I've left uni with a degree in advertising and I've gone mm, actually uh, I don't want to do advertising <laughs> so but that, that's so common that is so common to like like if anything like throughout uni you know, it's it's the, the things you do on the side. It's like, oh, that's actually the thing I'm, I'm looking forward to, as opposed to yeah. the subject you take. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Sure. Have there been any kind of what, what's been like the highlight show where you look back and think, oh, I'd do that again? Oh, <laughs> okay. Without a question, mm-hmm. um, we went. We supported Melanie Martinez in Portsmouth oh. and somewhere else, and it was like to this day was my absolute favorite because her audience was insane like obviously they knew there was going to be a support right and they were like screaming before we'd even come out and then when we came on the energy was like unreal it, it kind of like 
it kind of like almost felt like we were the main act because the energy that the audience were giving was like insane and they were like screaming for us and then when we went off they kept screaming it was just it was just wicked because like when there's an audience who that's like really involved with what you're doing and like really enjoying what you're playing you just it just makes it 10 times better mm. and um we did yeah we did a couple shows with 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 her and they were really fun they were such a good experience and also we did we've done a couple with like uh we did some with Katie Tunstall as well, and those ones are pretty good. Um, I love her. She's fantastic. She's oh, like she's so good. Yeah, like not only her uh, tunes banging, but like she's just like I know, like good mum energy, like or cool aunt energy. Yeah, where it's just like definitely, she's so cool. Yeah, she's so nice as well. Like she she was really like welcoming to us, and she had these wicked red leather pants on that I always remember. They were so cool. <laughs> um don't know why they stuck in the mind they just did um <laughs> but yeah like we've done some we've done some pretty cool stuff and I and all the festivals as well the festivals are great because they're like a different vibe um and their outdoor gigs are quite fun as well I, d mm -hmm. I don't know why I just oh, I just quite like them because like people come and go and watch you or whatever um but basically I just really missed it this past year and I'm, I'm so happy to get back into it now yeah it's coming it's so. coming it's coming <laughs> Yeah. Do you, yeah. you got stuff? You got stuff in the diary, though. We do. Yeah, we do. We've got obviously we've got boardmasters in a couple of weeks, and I'm just looking at my diary now. I don't, I don't think there's a lot in there right now, but you know, at least there's not nothing. Yeah. At least there's because there's been a lot of there's been a lot of things where you know we've been like, oh, can you do this date? There's going to be a festival, and then it's cancelled, um, which is a bit rubbish, but. Mm bit rubbish to have like a cancelled festival because yeah. then you get all excited and then it doesn't happen yeah with the, with at least yeah. the stuff i've got this year well i mean now kind of restrictions are lifted and whatnot i'm i'm a lot more hopeful but um at the start of the year for basically every gig and festival i had i was like well that's not going to happen you know I've got, i'm going to keep the ticket just in case but i can set myself yeah. the mm, no um, which was a shame. yeah I know it's so sad I literally like I went to a festival the other day not not to play in but like I went to watch it with my parents and it was called Pen Fest or something and um Rag and Bone Man was was you know the main act and I was watching him and I was like oh my god it's been so long since I've actually watched a gig <laughs> and like been able to and just be around like so many people it was it was kind of surreal but really fun yeah. I, really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I, I had that. I mean, I went to the download pilot. I went to Latitude Festival and both times it was just magic. Like I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. But sadly, Latitude Festival is now why I'm inside on a podcast. Um, so, oh, you're joking. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it from Latitude. Um, oh, no. I, it was worth it. I saw the Chemical Brothers. I, I, that was a childhood dream ticked off. So I was oh, OK amazing. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to ask who, who you saw. Yeah, um, so Latitude, uh, Chemical Brothers were a major highlight. Like that was just, oh, euphoric. Um, mm. Who else? Uh, Declan McKenna was great fun. Hot Chip were great. Wolf Alice, um, Green Tea Pang, she was a great highlight. Yeah, just loads of good bands. I, w I will say it's the most middle class festival I've ever been to in the world. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> like they've got like they've got yoga. They 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 um. Every morning, at 10, every morning at 10 a.m. they had Zumba classes. It was just like... I, sorry, what what kind of festival is that? I, know, I, I thought I'd heard of Latitude. I was like, oh, you know, it's always had a good lineup. I'm like, I'll go to that. And then I remember yeah. getting up to go get some breakfast and I just heard from um, uh, the Waterside stage and I just see like a sea of people in like fitness gear all doing Zumba. I'm like, That's mental. I, I feel a bit out of place here. Um, That's mental. Yeah, it was a weird one. <laughs> but um, That'd be like the last thing that I'd want to do if I went to a festival. Like, oh yeah, let me just pack my gym stuff. I just want to do a spot of Zumba while people, I'm waiting. People would the, jog around waiting the festival. Waiting between the sets. People would jog. It was weird. You're joking. So yeah, um, yeah, but it, it was a good time. Um, but I honestly, I don't think I'd go back just because it is a bit, it, it's not very festival-y. It's very, it, yeah, it's very posh. Um, uh, but, yeah, no, you want you want a bit of like grottiness for a festival. I, I want to see people like, walking around covered in mud. Exactly. Then you know that you're home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. Oh, so, but no, I hopefully, uh, I mean, next year I've got a bunch of festivals booked, so I'll be sorted. Oh, what, what are you going to go and see? Uh, I'm going to Primavera Festival in Barcelona. Ooh. Yeah, where it's, it's a two-week so cool. two festival, 14 days of chaos. Wow. So I'm looking forward That's to that, mental. yeah. So, yeah. Well, to... Can you, can you put me in your suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> there are tickets still on sale. Um, yeah, <laughs> that'd be good, yeah. So uh, I guess That's so cool. as we look into the future, let's briefly pop into the past. Where were you a year ago? Don't oh, have to be exact, but what, was, like, what was going what was going on a year ago? Oh, a year ago, a year ago, it was it was an ice cream van. That happened in the last a year podcast. ago I, with, with Jamie in the last <laughs> really? podcast. Yeah, like halfway through, ice cream van came through. It's a theme today. It sounds like it sounds like it's right outside my window. It sounds like straight out of a scary movie. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> anyway, uh, last year I was. I just celebrated my birthday and I remember that because it was like this little weird period where we were actually allowed to socialize and then we were locked down again. Yeah. Um, it all got very confusing, but in my birthday period, I was allowed to see family and friends and they, I had a surprise party. And uh, the thing that I remember most about that is I got as my 21st birthday gift. I got like studio set up. So I got a microphone um from my partner Arzia which was like the sweetest thing ever it's amazing it's an Aston spirit microphone and I love it with oh, yeah. my entire heart it's very good and then I got like you know all the all the bits and bobs that you need to like record yourself from home and like I don't know I remember that really well because I was like I can do what I want to do now with this stuff because before I'd be recording stuff on GarageBand and I'd be using like these shitty Apple headphones on the wiry one like the a microphone that's like this big I mean. and uh, yeah yeah those ones those ones mate I have to say they sounded absolutely wank on GarageBand and then um Arzia got me a microphone and I was like oh, I can do what I want now <laughs> so that was so have you, have, you been, have you been have you been writing happy. a lot recently then to be honest I've not written a lot I don't I don't know why but I don't find that I write a lot I prefer to cover things and and my favorite thing in the world is to like layer harmonies mm -hmm. on stuff so like I'll cover a song and I'll put down like the main vocals but like the favorite my favorite part of the whole process is just like layering some epic harmonies over stuff um because like my roots are jazz so I like putting jazzy harmonies and like making up my own stuff over a known song so that's what I prefer to do. That's what I like doing at the moment. But um, I'm going to try and write some music because I feel like I feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, of but, course. Whereas, like, I mean, me, I with me know, being I, with me having used to be um, DJ, I was like, well, I guess I should really write some music. That's what DJs do. They play their own music, right? Um, yeah. Although, actually, think about that. Um, when you said you like, you love to layer harmonies, I remember when we were recording Eyes. For those of you who listening who, oh, yeah. who don't know, um, Hannah was on my debut single Eyes. Um, but I remember that recording process where I assumed you would just come in and and record and then bugger off be like no 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 we need we need to add more harmonies no more harmonies and it's like yeah just turn that one right to you but it needs it just that and with me being a pretty a, a novice to kind of like the world of like actual music i i mean i was just like normally it's on the computer just yeah that sounds good so let's leave it at that i had no real knowledge so it was really interesting because kind of actually I know recording that was because that was also my first time recording vocals, so just layering. Was it? Up. Yeah, generally, I, I oh, the way I do with music is I make it up as I go along, and it somehow works and sometimes doesn't. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, God, that which would have that been was... four, five, maybe six years ago. I I, I feel like it was nearly six years ago because I was. Hold on, how old am I now? I just turned twenty, and I was. 16 yeah, so yeah, yeah. quick right. maths it's like five six years mental Gem my dog's whining outside sorry if you hear weird noises it's my dog um, <laughs> Not at all, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah that was crazy that was so long ago yeah still slaps still slaps 
still a banger. Still an <laughs> <Yeah>. absolute banger. <laughs> oh yeah, Cry- yeah. That, that that is weird to think, but because I remember like the writing sessions when you were in um in my little studio. Um, yeah. Although I think we no we wrote it um one year and then the next year recorded it. That's what the funny yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, good time. Yeah, I remember because I went into your little studio and I was like, oh, this is so cool because you had like all your LED signs up and everything and it was just wicked. It was so cool. <laughs> and then you had, the, I don't entirely remember it, but then you had this little slidey door and yeah. I don't know what was in there, but I just found your entire studio quite cool. <laughs> so. Oh, no, it was a good times. Yeah, we briefly looked at the past, but now <laughs> let's look into the future. Um, where do you see yourself in a year or where would you like the, the year to go for you? So, uh, if I'm, if I'm like being realistic in a year, I will still be broke. (laughs) But if I'm, if I'm living my dreams, then in a year, uh, I will have like probably figured out what I want to do in in music. And like, I will have more of a structure to my life. Cause right now I'm, I'm like, I don't, I just, I just don't know right now. I don't know. And I just, in a year's time, I would hope to have more of a structure and have like a more stable kind of uh, life mm-hmm. because um, right now I do not. <laughs> so okay. I would hope that that's not the case in a year's time. <laughs> yeah. It's okay to have a bit of chaos. I mean, it, it's, I feel like everyone's had a similar story in that I know the, the level of uncertainty and like, yeah, it, it, it's just been pure uncertainty. So I, I don't think you're alone in that. I think that, um, I think the fact that everyone else is pretty um, uh, somewhat lost and a bit like, ah, what's going to happen means that um, you're not really kind of competing with anyone. Yeah, like you, everyone's on, yeah. it's, it's a level playing field, I guess you could say. Yeah, everyone's just uh, lost and confused together. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I guess what's what's giving you hope then, um, given that we've had a, a terrible, terrible 15 months, what's the thing that's giving you hope? Just the fact that I have like great people around me. Like I have, I'm really lucky because I have like people around me who will, it sounds really cheesy and it sounds really kind of, you know, cliche, but like if I do fall, then I have people around me who who will help me or like, you know, like kind of push me back up. Or if I, um, I don't know, I, I have a lot of people around me who are really driven themselves and they kind of give me a lot of opportunities. And um, so, yeah, that's the one thing that gives me hope is that I'm just surrounded by a great bunch of people, like a load of legends. And I'm really happy about that because I don't feel, because although I feel kind of alone and lost right now because it's a very confusing time, uh, I I never am. Mm -hmm. So I never feel like totally, um, you know, disappointed or like worried. That's good though. So. That's what you need. You need you need that kind of that bunch of peeps around you to, yeah, keep you going. That's always important. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad that I have that. Yeah, so. and of course, because yeah, um, your partner is it? What's their name? Is it As Asia? Asia. Asia. There it is. So it's like it's spelled a. You'd read it Asia, but you say yeah. like Asia because she because she's Italian. Very nice. Very nice. Um, <laughs> I know. Oh, at Italy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, because uh, I because I haven't seen you in, in ages, so I'm 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 at, I'm, oh, no. I'm out of the loop. But but how long have you guys been together? Oh, nearly four years now. Crikey. Wow. Yeah. She's oh, she's actually I just love her to bit. She's without meaning to sound too cheesy and like soppy. She's just she's just the best person for me. Like I don't know what happened, but I managed to strike gold. <laughs> <laughs> She's a legend. She's amazing. Oh, yeah. You 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 two always look so happy together. So it's a joy to yeah, see. Yeah, she makes me happy. Aww. Yeah, she's so, so nice. <laughs> oh, well, um, as I begin to wrap this short but sweet podcast up, um, well, are we going to be okay? It's, it's been it's been a time, but you know, the, everything has gone. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. So yeah. 
So it's only are, up are from we, here. We'll be are, absolutely fine. Are you sure? Because well, I need I'm in need of some reassurance. I've been asking everybody on this podcast to give me some reassurance that something will be okay. But I, I want to find out, are we going to be okay? We will be absolutely fine. We as as you just said, we've been through the worst. So like it's only up from here. And you know, if if another lockdown happens or whatever, we're already equipped for it. We've already found shit to do. So like we'll be absolutely fine life moves on you know what I mean like life, life never dwells so we'll be absolutely fine amazing no well, <laughs> well that is very reassuring to hear um <laughs> thank you very much I may much. be wrong but... <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, well, well we'll have a podcast in a year's time and see if you um if yeah. you're correct in your predictions <laughs> um yeah. Where, where can the lovely people at home keep track of, of what you're doing, what, what you're releasing, where you're playing? What, where can people find that? I am, I'm quite active on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram. Hannah7Elizabeth is my name. Um, that's about it, really. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Oh, so I do have a YouTube channel as well. It's just my name, Hannah Freeman. I've Wonderful. got a couple covers on there, but like, yeah basically instagram wonderful where well, you can find all so, of that in the description um stay tuned for more podcasts on the rona chats where we have a bunch of other people such as omar Suleiman, uh jamie ponch or raymond Sh- uh Schaff. Uh, god there's been so many to, to think of what, what episode we're on now but there's been a there's been a lot and you can have a look at them uh the playlist is in the description so be sure to check that out thank you very much for coming and this has been the rona chats i'll see you next time now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Alex, there's still some time left on the video and you'd be correct in saying that. Well done, Bob. But guess what? We've got a second part of today's podcast. That's right, a second guest. Um, I booked too many people to be on the podcast and they were all so lovely that I wanted them all. So that means there's a part two to today's episode. That's right. We are joined by the wonderful George Delacour, a London-based actress who I hope you'll find very interesting, as did I. Let's check it out. Continuing on, episode seven. We're still here. I'm still wearing the poncho. Life is lonely and boring, but it's okay because I have company. I'm joined by the wonderful Georgia Delacour. How are you doing? I am great, thank you. How are you? How's it going? Oh, you know, this is exhilarating. It's it's incredible being inside for 10 days at a time. I honestly couldn't couldn't ask for anything better. So it's it's truly wonderful. Crazy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You know, I, I went so crazy that I decided to set up a podcast. That's when you know that I've lost the plot. I love it. That's creativity at its very finest. <laughs> Turning mind. pain into art. Oh, how have you been enjoying the end of the world? Oh, hasn't it been great? Hasn't it been a thrill? Um, it's been an adjustment, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, get, we're getting there. Yeah, because obviously you graduated um, in the like like me in the middle of of the shitstorm. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess after uni, how was like? Have you found opportunities to be creative in some form? Like, yeah. So I think um, what has sort of struck me the most is that you have to sort of really um, you have to make it. You know, you have to make it for yourself. You have to make your opportunities. You can't wait for them to sort of come. And I think that is kind of with anything, really, at any time of life, you know, without a pandemic, that is sort of the case. I think you have to be proactive, especially in a creative career. But I think having this thrown in, it really is like the opportunities have dropped. Um, And, you know, rightly so in, in some ways, because they shouldn't go forward because of safety reasons, especially last year um but then it's like okay I'm still here like and loads of people are still here and they're still creative they still want to crack on with that um so yeah I think making the opportunity for yourself and keeping yourself working and and in your own creativity it has has been something that has it's almost challenging to Mm -hmm. set those tasks for yourself but it's so rewarding when when you do start something and and do something creative it feels great so yeah i think making those opportunities for yourself has definitely been something um that hit me when uni ended and we were in the big old pandemic (laughs) yeah it it was a weird thing because 
you set yourself up, uh, at least I found, I, I set myself up for, well, you know, this is it. I'm, 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 I'm coming free from this all. You know, I'm, I'm about to enter the world of work. And it was just like, I mean, obviously completely flipped expectations in that, I mean, I, I'd say to say that no one had the year they thought they were going to have, but I feel like this generation of uni students were particularly uh, hit like in a in a pretty crappy way where it was just like no not only was the scary thing you that you that was going to happen not happening but like it there, there's still that pressure of well you need to find a job but you can't find a job but you need to find a job because you've just spent these mm. three years so it's been stressful yeah i mean but i um i mean looking forward now that we're somewhat through the shit storm somewhat um what what's uh i guess what are you looking forward to in terms of like what what now that things are i guess kind of reopening properly now and that you can grace the stage once more what what's uh exciting mm. for you um for me it's interacting with people again and i mean generally of course but i mean in a in a creative way in the sense of like going to workshops and you know meeting people to to workshop ideas and to go to theater and to discuss theater and to go to concerts and all these sort of things that you miss out on and and um so much of theater and all of theater really is collaboration it's speaking with other people it's working with other people and and i so look forward to doing workshops and meeting completely new people with new perspectives and new ideas that you know you come together and make something great for a day even like a day workshop and it just you learn so much and I think you learn from each other constantly and to not have that um I think has been really difficult for people in in all sorts of creative industries so definitely getting back to working with people and just playing like just being in a rehearsal room and just playing around um 100 I can't wait <laughs> yeah I w w whenever I look back as uh, for those of you listening at, don't, uh, at home that don't know, I used to do theatre. And when I think back on it, um, and occasionally when I'll, I'll, I'll like dabble in it, it, it does just kind of unearth like a really almost childlike, um, playful nature. Because it is just oh, it's so much fun. Um, I guess to, to not uh, touch on the, the pandemic and end of the world shitstorm that we were just through, um, <laughs> to go a bit further back, like what was your... What, what made you want to kind of go, yeah, I, I, the, the whole actoring thing, that sounds good. What, what was that for you? Because um, the, these podcasts, was... they're an opportunity for me to just kind of delve in and ask questions that I'd never normally ask, but I always want to know about people. So what was that kind of story sure. for you? Um, I think in a lot of stories, you hear that people um, come to it quite young. And that really wasn't the case for me. Like, I was such a shy child. Um, and I just, I used to read all the time. I loved stories. I loved just taking a butcher party. I would sit in the corner, you know, and just read the book and so I was quite happy to do that. Um, and then I think, I think it all sort of comes from a love of stories um, and other people and learning about people's experience and their stories and their experience of the world. And I think as I, got older and um, I think that just naturally quite transitioned into theatre and into films um, and it sort of never really crossed my mind as something that I could do it seemed quite detached and then I think it was actually a teacher in school who said to me once well would you like to do that and I was like oh actually I think I would and it just kind of like it wasn't something I ever thought was sort of there I suppose um so yeah, I think probably like around 16, 17, I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And I just sort of didn't really look back. I just sort of went home and was like, I'm going to move to London and be an actor. My parents were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, I have to say like, admittedly, that's different to, I'm, I'm, I mean, I imagine a lot of um, people in the industry, their stories, because I mean, who, who start like as kids and little ones um, being like, oh, this is what I want to do. That's, I, yeah, because mm. I, at least you come across as someone who's very like just theater 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 and so it's interesting to hear that it was a somewhat recent development i guess you could say mm -hmm. um yeah no i mean to delve in even more into it um what's been what's been kind of like i guess 
some really like good moments, like like the, the moments you look back on in, in, in the world of theatre going, that was good. I, w- I, w- I want to relive that again. <laughs> well, that's a very good question. Um, I'm just thinking through like, all the really good pieces of theatre. Um, so one I, I didn't see, um, I didn't see myself. I watched it on National Theatre at Home, um, mm-hmm. their streaming uh, platform, which was just the best development of Big 2020 up. slash 2021. Amazing. I watched Phaedra with um, Helen Mirren, which is an a incredible piece of theatre. She plays that so incredibly well. Um, but something I saw, actually, it was the last thing I saw. And the next piece of theatre I'm going to see since then is actually this Saturday. I'm going to see Constellations. Um, but the last thing I watched, which was about, I don't know, three or four days before we locked down, was um, The Visit or the, I think it's The Old Lady Comes to Call with uh, Leslie Manville. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. It's a hefty play. It's yeah, I think it was like three hours, maybe there were two intervals. Honestly, I thought I was gonna get tired, but she was absolutely captivating. Like I've seen her in television and she's amazing, but on theatre she just really she lights up the stage. It was just (laughs) mesmerizing. It was a lesson in acting, you know, just watching it. Um so hundred percent that the timing. It's just (laughs) amazing. I remember because like for me it was almost poetic how um because uh I saw a um a piece of theatre which oh my goodness so bad I've forgotten the name um this is England um yes yeah. I know mm-hmm. um where and you know the kind of uh, original just before the pandemic um began and then um my first piece of theatre back was uh this kind of sequel to that it was it was poetic that it, it went that way um for me i think but yeah uh, that was fantastic yeah. um uh who was it uh Rafe Spall, i think but yeah he killed it um i suppose uh one question that i've always asked which i find gets at least some interesting answers is what what were you doing a year ago today and it doesn't have to be exact but what was going on like around this time last year what are we in july august we're in August now, which is terrifying. We're almost done with this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Um, yeah. I was at home this time last year, I think. Uh, I, when I say home, I mean Devon home. Um, with my family, that's where I was at this time. I think I was just about to come back to London to, or maybe I was already here. This was around the time we did, um, as you like it, at the New Normal Festival. Um, so we didn't do that till sort of the end of August so I may have just been coming back to London at this point last year to rehearse for Rosalind for Why Do You Like It? Interesting. So kind of a theatre time this time last year was quite a theatre time. Yeah of course I mean so that was uh so as you like it I mean doing that kind of socially distanced and all, and all of that how was how was that performance on stage because there's something about looking at a, a crowd where, you know, everyone's kind of packed in and it's all exciting. But what was it like performing to a socially distant crowd? It was, it was really, do you know what? It was great. I think after, um, after not being able to do that for so many months, like for all, everyone, the audience, the, you know, the um, performers, to not being able to, to have not been able to be in that situation and then to be, going to this performance and being a part of this performance it was electric it really was like everyone was just so happy to be there it was such a nice atmosphere and we we performed outside um Mm -hmm. so we were in this stunning courtyard um so it was socially distanced but you kind of didn't really um notice it kind of felt almost festively um yeah it was great and it did rain in the middle of the performance (laughs) on both occasions although my when I was playing there were two of us playing Rosalind my um friend Rosie Malone um played her one night and I played it the second night and I have to say Rosie did get more rain than I did so (laughs) hats off to Rosie for getting for getting through that whole play with more rain um but yeah um it was really exciting everyone you could just tell everyone was so happy to be there Oh, brilliant. Yeah. I, I recently um, was working at a, this is before restrictions are lifted, but I was working at um, a, a, a theatre called the Roman Theatre, where it's the, it's the only surviving um, theatre from 
um, the period of the Romans. Um, but in fact, it, that I mean that was kind of like a similar thing where it was outdoors, socially distant, but it it kind of didn't matter because there was something so magic about it. Um, well, I was teching for that, but I do, there there is something really interesting about outdoor theatre because I mean, I mean more often than not you go to the theatre it means you're going into a theatre, and uh, mm. I I love I mean I think with all kind of forms of performance on stage it's great having it outdoors I I love that it's difficult in this country because we get as you said we get a little bit of rain but it you is do, get tough, yeah it works really well yeah so as I guess we look especially in... if it's... Yeah, go for it. Especially if it's site specific, like if something's sat outside um, and you're performing it outside, it's like nothing else, you know, it's really, it's wonderful. And because as you like, it was set in a forest, it was a perfect opportunity to, to just take it outside. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, as you like, it's a great one. <laughs> so I guess um, as we look into the future now, um, yeah. what, what's giving you hope? giving me hope in yeah. general or in the theatre community um that's up to you <laughs> in general uh, prob the answer is probably the same for both and it's my answer to basically everything it is just other people you know it's just um there is a great sense of um camaraderie i think um not as a not all the time not with everyone but I think in a general sense people do come together um which is nice and people support one another um and I think we've seen so many examples of that over the last year um which has been quite warming in a lot of ways you know to see to see that um obviously there have been instances where that hasn't been the case but as with everything nothing is perfect unfortunately um but with the theatre community the same like people have um persevered and you know there have been times where um my microphone's falling <laughs> i think there have been times in in the sort of creative industries in general not just in theatre where we've been hit over the last year uh, and uh, with mm, lack of funding and um, you know I, I think lack of importance I think applied to to a lot of creative subjects again not just theatre a, a lot of different um, creative paths so um, we always persevere and we always find a way uh, and that's it's so nice and that that is hopeful you know because it never really dies it always comes back yeah no absolutely yeah i guess what 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 what's um as you as you look at that year with with, with that with that glimmer of hope what do you, what do you want from this year what do i want from this year <clears throat> I don't know if I really have any. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have any expectations, let's say. Um, I think, if anything, the last year has taught me to be present a lot more. Um, and that in certain elements, you do have to look ahead and you do have to plan ahead. But I think um, we focus a lot on that in, in sort of today's world. Um, and just appreciating your day and the day you're in and the moment you're in a lot more um has has been something something of a lesson for me over the last sort of 18 months year so yeah I don't know I think I just I I just a very sort of basic answer I just want to see people healthy I want to be ha happy I want to sort of in, in enjoy the moments you know and just sort of just take it day by day i haven't haven't got a expectation from the airhead no of course that's a i, I like that answer a lot <laughs> <laughs> cool so i guess as we wrap this short and sweet podcast up but i've got one more question yes are, are we gonna be okay it's been, it's been a time oh, like i need to i'm looking for some reassurance i need some reassurance are we gonna be okay Yes, okay, of course good. we are. <laughs> good. We're gonna be good. fine. We've got this. Yeah, it's. it's I've, I've had some interesting answers from that one. Some people going, "Well, 
we're pretty fucked. It's doomsday. Oh, well, the planet's dying. <laughs> so it's it's incredibly reassuring to hear go, oh, yeah, you've got nothing to worry about. You've got absolutely nothing you've to worry this. about. There are so many things happening in the world. There are so many things to be worried about and concerned. But I do understand that and I do take the weight of it. Um, but you've, you know, if you're, if you think you're doomed, then you're doomed. You know, you have to, you have to think we're going ahead somewhere good in order to put those steps into action. So I've got, I've got to think it's going to be okay. So yeah, I stand by that. Well, th thank you very, very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, thanks for talking. It's been very, very interesting. I, yeah, very, very cool. Where, um, if, there, if, if there's anything you want to plug, by all means plug. Oh my god, I have nothing to plug. You have nothing, not even a spotlight or anything like that. Wes Anderson could be watching, for God's sake. Um, Check out my spotlight below, it's Georgie Delacour. There we go, there we go, you can see ads. Um, cool. No, thank you very, very much. Um, thank you so much for having me, it's been, it's been fun, it's been a joy. Yes, absolutely, and hopefully when I'm freed from these four walls, we'll find ourselves at the pub. Yes, please, 100%. <laughs> Excellent. Let me know when you're free and I'll be there. Yeah, wonderful. And to those of you watching at home, uh, feel free to check out the other episodes. We've had many, 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 many other guests such as, God, I mean, we've, we've had so many now, I've forgotten them all, but we've had like Leon Parson, Shaw Raymond, uh, Schaff. Uh, we've got many more coming, such as uh, the band Ill Informed, who are a great hardcore band from Hertfordshire. We've also got Aunt Bell talking about their world of YouTube and photography. So check those out and I will see you tomorrow. This has been the Rona Chats. I'll see you next time. Cool. Two podcasts in one. Fucking nailed it, mate.